Isaias. He is the head of manufacturing productivity at BMA. Ben has extensive experience in continuous improvement principles and transformation engagements, leading to significant productivity gains, cost savings, and increased efficiency. Ben has successfully led engagements and projects across multiple industries, primarily in the United States, South Africa, Australia, and other countries in Europe and Asia. And with that, Ben, I will go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you very much, Skylar, and thank you, Jim and Lean Frontiers team for uh, inviting me to, to speak this evening in South Africa time, at least, and welcome everybody else from wherever you're calling in from in the world. And I'm really appreciative of the community that Lean Frontiers has built over the years and some great events as you probably already attend or are looking to attend. And really it's just special as you go into the, the world with the lean kind of banner that you fly. It's just unique, the people that you meet and the like-minded nature of us all kind of aligning around continuous improvement in the various forms that that can take. So let me go ahead and pull up my screen here and we'll get into the presentation this evening. You guys have already uh, sent through a couple questions it looks like, so we'll touch on those uh, towards the end of the presentation, we'll aim for about 25 minutes or so of content, and then uh, obviously want to leave a good amount of time to answer whatever questions you might have. So the theme or the topic of our webinar is around a, a culture of people development that might be familiar from uh, those of you that know my father and the work that he's done around a culture and that piece of it, but it's near and dear to my heart as well, and you truly do see the power of uh, the type of culture that we as leaders are really charged to establish in our operating environments. And then really the uh, the toil or the work that it takes on a day in and day out, week in and week out basis to maintain and foster, I like to say, this type of system of people development. And likewise, too, we'll incorporate some of the TWI or training within industry. Those modules uh, provide a great framework of how we can look at this type of culture in the system. So we'll touch on those briefly as well, along with some of the leadership principles uh, to help round it out. I will say this year I've been I've been very fortunate and grateful to do a, a, a good number of benchmarking opportunities, different parts of the globe. Uh, Japan earlier this year, likewise in England um, in June of this year, and a couple other opportunities both here in South Africa and in the U.S. And really, uh, I hope to have made those elements come through clearly in my presentation that wherever you are in the globe, there are certain elements of these systems uh, in terms of improvement or people development that I really think can be used universally. So hopefully you'll see that as well as we get into the content. Again, just to give you an outline of what we'll touch on, some of the leadership philosophy, and then we will use the TWI modules as our framework. I find that they provide a, a great overlay in terms of how we wanna look at these systems, and then we'll do Q&A at the end. Um, those of you that have seen any of my presentations, you've probably seen this slide, and I, I love um, putting it up first. I, I was also very fortunate to begin my journey at Toyota in Kentucky, uh, about 10, 12 years ago now, and every day walking in that facility, you, you see that banner, good thinking, good products. And uh, at the time, I might not have realized the power of that, but now over the years of seeing it in action and uh, being able to see it on the wall in Toyota HQ in Japan and other places, I think you really recognize the, the thinking that goes into that slogan and how it uh, resonates as a leader, that that is your role to influence the thinking of your team members and the people that are reporting into you, that you're responsible for and to support them and build them in terms of being problem solvers, but also influencing the system as a whole. So you see some of the quotes there from EG Toyota and, and really just the way that uh, we can ideally look at the people that we have as our resources in our organizations. Another piece that I wanted to put in here, um, this came to our attention, or I had a great uh, overview on this from a former Toyota leader, uh, Mr. Amazawa, while we were in Japan, Lexus leader as well in Japan, uh, but he went through each of the uh, Taichi Ono 10 precepts here, and I, I perhaps hadn't spent as much time as I could have on these elements before, so I, I recommend when you have some time going forward from today, um, have these in front of you whenever possible, or maybe reflect on them briefly. Just as a leader, they, uh, they're they some of the original principles that I, I love reflecting on um, in my day-to-day, week-to-week, and just being able to refresh on that viewpoint. But I really like starting with this as we look at how to foster this type of culture and the system improvement. Some of these viewpoints of what your role is, again, as a leader in that system uh, come very much to a stark uh, view here with that Mr. Ono presented those. So we'll begin with these just to maybe ground us a bit and more time could be spent a longer webinar, but hopefully you can come back to that as a reference point. Let's remind ourselves as well, in the interest of time and our focus for today, 
the purpose of all of these lean tools and even some of the elements with TWI and Kata and all these great elements that we're learning through these webinar series and our events, the goal with them is to identify and solve problems. That's our role as a leader. That's our roles of uh, supporting our team members within their day-to-day. Uh, -day. And really, I think the goal with that is that you can build incremental skill with problem solving the more you do it. So it's like a muscle. And I think the, the purpose of this is that it's not a static event. You don't go into a week and solve a set of problems and expect them never to come back. Or likewise, that uh, you'll, you'll never have to kind of challenge yourself with those again. The element and the, the reality of problem solving is that it's continuous in nature. And I think if we can get our heads around that, and really embrace that as a leader, then it changes the way that we can reflect that to our team members, that we celebrate problems. We go into the day uh, attacking them head on and we, we create all the systems and tools in order to make them even more highlighted and visible to us so that we can then go after them and solve them. So just I uh, hope that we have that as our, as our focal point. I know oftentimes in whatever environment you get times of complaints or, man, I wish there weren't so many problems in my day to day, but I think, uh, Let's, let's take a moment, reflect, and, and remind ourselves that problems are indeed worth celebrating with the right type of system that we can have. So let's get into our first element here, or module, I should say, with job instruction. I've got the cards here. I know many of you are, are well-versed in this, probably well beyond my, uh, my level of expertise with TWI, but it really is one of the most straightforward training frameworks I've ever come across. And I've been very fortunate the last year to be doing a bit of deeper study. I was able to attend a, a little bit of the TWI and Kata Summit in Indianapolis earlier this year, a great event likewise. And I think what I've, what I've seen, and when you reflect on the history of it coming out of World War II, it was a practical needs-based way that the, the Department of War at the time was looking at how do we bring up our workforce. And it obviously was a highly variable workforce given the reality of the war, but first let's learn how to instruct our team members that are coming into a new operating environment. Once they've learned how to do the job, then obviously we need to be thinking about how to improve it. Once we're learning how to improve it with the job methods, then we need to think about how do we handle the relations piece between our team, team members and our managers and some of the problems that come up with that and then job safety also being added in there. So I've now looked at TWI not as a standalone training uh, framework, but more so as a very intuitive sequential manner that you can look at the system that you're working within to understand it, improve it, build the relationships within it, build your team members within it, and obviously maintain safety and quality as you go through that. So our first idea here with job instruction, and it's a, a quote or a thought that I've um, had some good discussions on recently is how do we in today's day and age make our operating environments a learning academy and whatever word you want to use university academy college school I think the goal is is that we at least I'm guilty of it oftentimes you look externally to think how can we go learn something I need to go to another world to go benchmark or I need to go take a, a, a program or certification to go learn something but I think rather changing that attitude and, and realizing what we have in our backyards, out our office doors, in our operating environments, and all of the, uh, the abundance of problems that we obviously have in those worlds, and looking at that as an opportunity to learn and improve is really special. And I think um, oftentimes, too, with training, it is a, it's a lifeblood of this type of culture that we're looking to build, people development. And I've seen it, and again, I'm guilty of it as well, but we, we relegate training to a department maybe in the corner that handles it and does a pretty good job, and we get a report every now and then of how it's going, but we don't necessarily look at it, again, as that lifeblood of our system, that if we have a, a continuously learning and adapting and evolving environment where we are going through these steps of how to instruct, we have a clear plan in place, we're bringing in all the subject matter experts within our environments, the people that have been there for many years or that are truly expert in their given uh, work task, how can we be leveraging their expertise and being able to use that to train our team members and building that virtuous cycle of our knowledge sharing. So again, I'm not trying to uh, make light of the other opportunities that exist for education and development certification and otherwise, but I do think let's, uh, let's look internally as well and understand what we could be doing from a job instruction standpoint within our own worlds. So the other side of this is that I, I felt recently even more so that we take some skills for granted, and this could be used quite um, quite widely or broadly, but I think what I've seen recently is even some of the things in an operating environment, call it Microsoft Excel, one of the most uh, unique pieces of software ever written, one of the most powerful, definitely, 
But I think oftentimes you, you make an assignment to your team member to go off and do an analysis or you expect them to be able to interpret what you've sent to them. And, and I don't think that that's respectful. And I've seen it firsthand recently that it's not respectful um, to, to, to do that. And I think also if we take that humble approach and going back briefly, sorry, on this job instruction of, of preparing a work or presenting it to them in a very straightforward manner, breaking it down, I think that is our daily challenge. Let, let's not take things for granted in our world. Of course, we expect people to learn and grow at a certain pace to maintain what the needs of the business or the environment are. But at the same time, let's be patient in the way that we're looking at people development. And if somebody is not comfortable voicing that they have a deficiency in a certain skill, let's figure out an objective way through our training program and our coordination that we can make that come to light, whether on a skills matrix or what have you, that we're able to then use that and build on that as a problem, again, that we can celebrate and think of how to um, um, create a program to address that need. So reflect on that, hopefully, but the goal is uh, let's let's look at that in our day to day that we should not take these things for granted and that uh, first let's build the environment and the culture where people do feel comfortable even saying that they might not have a certain level of skill that we think they would. So also in today's context, I know AI is a, a whole talking point and, and digital maybe is the nice word that we've been using to describe it now, some great content coming out on that. But I do think let's, let's not look at this as a panacea or a fix-all of, uh, of our operating world. I think of it as a yet another powerful tool that it has been presented to us. And it really is incredible what you can harness using some of this new technology. And there are some great education opportunities that are available, but also within our own worlds, how can we keep using it and evolving, experimenting with it? But I think something to reflect on for us leaders is that, uh, and this is more at a macro level, AI is really going to impact what would have historically been called white collar jobs. And, and I'd use that term, uh, somewhat tongue-in-cheek, tongue in but with that, it's copywriting, it's us being able to draft an email, or draft communications, or draft memos, or things on the computer perhaps are, are truly leveraged quite easily with some of this AI capability. But where there is a gap and where there's a, a dearth of capability currently with AI is around what we would historically call a blue-collar job, but that for me is where we want to celebrate the work being done that's at the shop floor, that's running the equipment and machinery, that's doing the maintenance on that equipment and machinery, um, that's maintaining all the quality controls. It takes all that rigorous checking day in and day out, the safety side of it as well. So I guess I say that to, from your viewpoint as a leader, um, I would say look at AI as a potential tool that you can use to leverage and harness um, specifically and especially within the administrative environment, within the office setting. But more so, let's reflect on the challenge for us within the, the team member setting, the shop floor setting of the work that needs to be done in order to clarify that work even more because it's not gonna solve all those problems. So hopefully uh, it's an evolving topic for all of us to help clarify what role does this fit or fill in organizations. But I think even more so it makes me reflect personally on the work that needs to be done uh, on the shop floor level in order to clarify and define the work even more clearly for our team members to uh, exceed. So that's with the job instruction piece, obviously more to be said on that, but uh, hopefully some thoughts to reflect on. Let's move briefly now to job methods. So again, this is building on what we cover with job instruction of how to do the work, break it down, um, train it, instruct it to our team members. And then now we're into the, the piece of how to improve the work. And this is gonna tie in with a little bit of the benchmarking um, that I had the privilege of doing earlier this year in, in Japan that helped crystallize some thoughts around a work system. But what I love when you just look at some of the original content here, it's making the best use of the manpower or the team members, the workforce we have available to us, the machines and materials that are currently available. So it doesn't say we're gonna have whatever this newfound uh, set of resources that somewhat someday come right in or our new team members that all of a sudden we're gonna hire. It's what we have available to us right now today. How do we wanna improve the work that's being done? It gives us a nice framework there. So on this one, we're going to spend a bit more time. And, and this is maybe my personal view, but hopefully it's a, it's distilled well enough for you to understand the way uh, to look at it in terms of the work system. So this is beyond um, the leadership philosophy. It's once we have alignment that that is our job as leaders to create a system where people learn, grow, and develop. And that's the kind of culture that we want to champion. And we have gotten into the framework of instructing and obviously building a base level of skill. Now we're thinking about the work system of how can we improve this? So the way that uh, I guess I'll put it to you here is first, let's design or define the work. And I think in any operating system, whether it's large scale manufacturing, CPG, fast moving goods, 
uh, software, administrative, office work, whatever environment you're coming from, it is universally applicable to say, what is our system capable of as a whole? And that could be uh, with a process map that we were able to look at all the various process steps in the flowchart view, a value stream map some of you might have done before, or a SIPOC looking at, uh, at a larger scale, suppliers, inputs, processes, et cetera, getting to the customer side. But let's first have a very clear shared understanding of our system and what is our system capable of. And that's where it ties in with a uh, viewing of theoretical max or T max capacity of what do we feel like our plan is that we can bank on as a team or as a company within our systems that we can then hold ourselves accountable to. So we're setting up a system of how to do this type of problem solving by first establishing what is our plan or our target that we would like to be able to, uh, to meet. Then I think also our role as leaders is to obviously look for risks, look for potential failure points, and then our our other goal is to simplify the work, hopefully, too, as we're building this system, hoping to create it, thinking through how can we make this most straightforward for the team members that are going to then be working within it. Now we're getting into this kind of people development side, specifically with how we manage the system. But I would say our role as leaders is to design, define, create the system that our team members will work within. But then our, our team members and our supervisors especially help us manage the system or maintain the system and then even better improve the system through some of that job methods uh, framework that we've seen. So all that happens day to day, minute to minute, actually, in terms of managing output plan versus actual. It's also the change points. This came to light very clearly with some of the visual boards that we've been seeing recently in all parts of the world. In Japan, they call it Hinka Ten, so it's change points. And I think what was so unique with that is that they used the, the four M, so the fishbone, manpower, machinery, method, materials. And every day that there was a specific meeting point around each of those to say, is there something unique or different that is going to alter the performance of the system for today that we need to be aware of as a team so that we can obviously prepare for it and minimize the risk that it will cause. And I thought that's so powerful that if you have a very clearly defined system that people feel comfortable, confident, consistent working within, that then it comes down to that day-to-day -day basis of how do you manage it by looking for what is a change point within it that is so stable and consistent that, again, we're looking for what could be a, an altering point as a change point that would introduce risk. And that's where our team members can most clearly put their hand up and help us see that. Also, then, our, our role is to implement the visual aid, some of the tools we know to be best practice. That's a lot of, large part of our study here in terms of Lean Frontiers community and beyond, in terms of what are these potential best practices that we can bring into our worlds to help us create this type of system and engage and develop our people. And then even better on these last two, identifying and solving problems. That is the lifeblood yet again of our, our people system to be able to say, what are the forums that we can create as, as leaders and managers for our team members to be engaged in this type of problem solving, whether it's daily meetings, team huddles on a regular basis, um, longer term initiative meetings that we might have on a weekly or monthly basis. But really, let's look at the processes, let's look at our system as a whole, figure out where we can create those forums of communication that make problems come to the surface using those tools. And then that gives us the goal that we can then take to solve the problems. And that obviously takes a certain level of capability that we need to develop and inspire within our world to create that problem solving capability, getting to root cause, breaking down the problem, prioritizing, et cetera, short term, long term. But uh, this is the flow, and I think um, any world that you can apply that to, uh, as I said before, a large part of these principles is universal in nature, and it really is around the communication piece, our role as leaders being to create and define the system, set our team members up for success, and our team members being able to raise their hand, pull the end on whatever terminology you, you will use to be able to identify problems firstly, and then ideally we're guiding them of how to solve those problems. So that is, in essence, how to foster that culture of of continuous improvement and people development by us first making it the culture that we celebrate problems and then also having the forms established that we can practice that. So a couple other examples here, and this is uh, a very directly tied to what we were seeing recently in Japan, but uh, on the designer to find the work, uh, there are many tools you can use, a Yamazumi chart, a work balance chart, whatever you wanna call it to help standardize, make that come to life and see the work that's being done. Um, and a large part can be said elsewhere on that, that how to do that, but hopefully you guys are very familiar with some of those tools. Building in quality and making that a large part of it, mistake proofing, thinking ahead on the risks, as we said before. And then I think also as we're designing and defining our work, how can we make it inherently more valuable? What is the customer 
um, willing to pay for, obviously, with the service side, delivery side, but then also making it fun. And a large part of our trip in Japan was seeing how some of this work uh, can be made very fun. And I think that is a challenge for us, too, is let's uh, let's think of those ways within our, our daily grind uh, that we can bring out some of that opportunity. So uh, I think hopefully points to reflect on there as well, but uh, large, large element there, making the work enjoyable for our team members. Um, also with the quality piece, we'll just tie in on that. I think for your team members, if you can also put that clearly on their minds too, that building in quality means working as part of that team, you're not passing on defects. And that was something that we heard very clearly and consistently and uh, somewhat crassly as well, that if you're passing on defects to a number, another member of your team, whether in a manufacturing or a service environment, it's uh, it's akin to picking up someone else's garbage trash, whatever word you want to think of it as. So uh, that was a large part of it that let's set up the system for success and obviously build in that mindset for our team members, their role of promoting and maintaining quality as they go through delivering the work within. Managing the system, I spoke on this briefly um, on that initial slide, but again, on the Hinka 10, the change points, a great example here of one of the boards that we saw uh, covering each of the elements on the fishbone diagram traditionally there. And, and for me, this is the most powerful tool that I would say uh, when you take to the shop floor and you engage your team members on, if you look at a day's results and you say, what was our plan for the day? Uh, output widgets, emails, uh, proposals, whatever it is. And you say, what was our actual number that we hit? We have a problem to solve, hopefully, whether good or bad. And then within that, using this tool as a way to break down the problem, understand where do we have any deficiency, whether from a team member staffing standpoint, uh, whether from an equipment machinery technology standpoint, material standpoint, if we had what we needed or not, methods, et cetera. So I would say this is uh, my recommendation to you, first line of how to promote this type of problem solving culture using this tool, fishbone, and then coupled with that mindset of let's also think of it day to day how to identify potential changes in our world, whether it's a new material for a new product that we're using, a new team member that we want to support when they're coming um, into the team or onto the line, a new piece of equipment, whatever that we're installing. But that mindset of let's be aware of those changes and use this framework day in and day out, I couldn't say more. So I highly suggest that as a way to maintain the system as well. Uh, also, we mentioned some of the visual boards, how to track this plan versus actual. There are so many methods whether digital or uh, analog on the whiteboard, uh, whatever. But I think that if you can, again, create problems by being able to say, what is our plan for the day? Being confident enough, courageous enough to be able to say that in your context for your team. What is our plan that we're going to get done for today or this week, whatever time frame? And then being able to truly say, where were we objectively against that with our actual? That is the first line of how we're going to identify problems with our teams and then be able to take the step to go after solving them. So whatever you want to use, we've got some awesome examples here, but uh, these are after many years of, of evolution as well, or many months at least too. So I think the goal with this is that visual systems of how to identify and solve problems don't need to be perfect, but they do need to be present. So that's a challenge to you. If, if you have not implemented these types of tools yet in your environment, I can't say enough of even the power of a whiteboard with a couple marks on it, schedule for the day, actual results for the day, start with that and then let the thinking evolve from that point. And what I'll say also is that the leadership behavior comes so much into play on that, where if team members aren't able or comfortable to be able to say, where were we actually based on what was our plan, then I think that's the first thing that we can address. And why do we feel like there might be fear or uh, whatever lack of confidence, perhaps, or lack of awareness of where we are, uh, you as a leader and also for your team. And so that's the first line of let's get over that hurdle from a culture standpoint to make people feel very comfortable being objective and saying plan versus actual. And then even better, let's start evolving it to have that, uh, that problem solving discipline taking hold. Okay, so identifying problems and hopefully this is just sparking other ideas for you guys as uh, as you're applying this in your world i know we got a couple minutes here uh, visual boards again all different types of tool ai as yet another buzzword that we can bring in there of a way that we can incorporate that in our day-to-day -day. identifying problems all the data that's being generated on a regular basis uh, pulling that harnessing that solving problems celebrating the before and after celebrating the improvements visualizing those, championing those, having your leadership team highlight those, however small they might be, that's still the goal. One step, one second, one cent, that's worth celebrating and harnessing and then building on that uh, continuously as we see there, using improvement as a focal point continuously, constant effort. 
On the final note here, then job relations, our role as leaders is to communicate widely, uh, articulately to the best extent possible, but I think consistently is, is the main thing. And, and that's around where are we today? Where are we heading from a vision standpoint, setting a clear, compelling vision, giving a clear view of what is our plan, what's our schedule, what's the actual results against that plan, whether on a daily, weekly, whatever basis, and being able to engage your team in that problem solving as well, having them see it consistently. And, and then on the relations piece, I mean, this truly is the lifeblood. If you look at those four steps of letting each other know how we're doing, giving credit where it's due, uh, telling people in advance where changes might affect us, they're doing that also with our Hinkaton, our change point management, making the best use of our ability. These are all such timeless principles in the way that we want to build this system and this culture of people development by communicating and being objective. If there is a deficiency in a certain skill, let's not shy away from that. And let's let's not waste time and wait for the team member to wake up one morning and tell us that there's a problem. If we're seeing it as a leader, let's go face it head on and say, we wanna show you respect. We wanna be able to set you up to succeed. So how can we support you to develop this skill? We wanna do whatever we can, whether internally or if we need to externally to develop it. And then building that, that uh, momentum, that inertia over time, it's a, it's a virtuous cycle. So uh, that's my challenge to us collectively is we continue to do that for our team members. We don't take skill for granted and that we're focused on the systems that we're building to incorporate training, development, this continuous learning cycle. Very good. All right. So a bit uh, hurried. I apologize if we were going through very quickly, but a couple questions and, and maybe one that we can start with. And Skylar, perhaps, or Jim, if you want to chime in with other questions, uh, one of the one of the ones that came up earlier was around on a lean journey, celebrating uh, results and and working towards those quickly, or celebrating the process. And I think if if you've uh, been versed in the lean space, hopefully you're aware of how much it's worth celebrating the process. And obviously, you don't want to be uh, stagnant, and you don't want to just say let's let's build the right process and spend months or years doing it, and then one day we'll get the results that we're looking for. But that goal, Kata, is a great framework, again, of how we want to do that improvement, learning from it. So I would say the the default attitude or stance as a leader is that we will celebrate process beyond results every time. And we, we use the results to say, is the process working? But then if we're going to be critical of anything, we're critical of the process to say, is that process set up to succeed, to get us the result that we're looking for? And if we're not getting it, then obviously that's our challenge to go back and look at how we create that system or create that process in order for our, our results to get better. So that hopefully kicks us off, but uh, any other questions here while we've got a few minutes? Uh, we do have a few. Um, Charles yeah. said, I have always heard to start small and focus with visual management so the explosion of visuals does not become wallpaper. Any thoughts or guidance on how to balance this against some of the significant size examples you presented? <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And I, I put the larger ones up there maybe as a, a view for the future, a benchmark perhaps, but I would say starting small, and uh, there are some of those key pillars. So from a lean stance, Toyota stance, safety, quality, service, cost, people, those are kind of the traditional management pillars that we would call those, or at least categories of a framework. But I would think in terms of starting with a whiteboard today, getting a blank board out, being able to say for your team, what do we want to look at? Do we want to look at a shift or today or a week in terms of what are our deliverables? Starting with that plan and however you would like to define that in terms of output or uh, uh, units, whatever that might be in your world, start with that. Start with a plan, use the whiteboard to track progress throughout the week, then have a reflection as a team on the whiteboard. Also be able to put where you had pain points or obstacles that came up during it. Then also, if you want to ask the question, what safety considerations or observations do we have? Anything from a quality standpoint, if we were rushing or whatever, any defects that we want to get ahead of? having that up on the board. And within a week, you've got an awesome living system of a visual system that then you can use to say, maybe there's a chart we can put up here for next week that gives us a history of whatever defects we've created so we can be aware of those. Hey, maybe from a, a schedule standpoint, we can put up here a graphic of what we're doing for the next month. So hopefully that gives you a view of how I would uh, recommend you begin. We even just done that recently. Start with a blank whiteboard, start with your plan, get the actual and then capture the thoughts along the way. Uh, in either direction of what was good or bad on it. Okay, how and where in TWI do you find the best use of Kata? This is a two-part question. And do you mm. use it as part of the leader's standard work? Ooh, good question. So probably a longer question, and maybe I'll recommend 
you come to the summit again next year on that one or the conference. So, uh, Kata to me, and I, I could be completely wrong on this. So I apologize, Mike Rother, if I, if I get it wrong, but this to me is your your default stance as a leader. This is where you are practicing a kata in all of your interactions. <laughs> and it's where are we now? Where can we get to? What small steps can we take um, that can show us what improvement is possible and keep working towards it? So I think in terms of the TWI framework within training development, how you engage your team members from a relation standpoint, it is really asking those questions. How are you doing? Where are you having issues? How can I support you? How can we take a next step? Uh, when can we check up on it? So I think just baking kata into your lexicon as a leader and the way that you're engaging as part of your leader standard work as you're going around your environment, asking those questions. I think uh, if people see that it's coming from good intent, you asking a very consistent set of questions, then they'll definitely answer and give you more than enough to get going on any of those, those tools. So hopefully that gives you a nice answer there. Okay, and then um, your thoughts on visual management in office environments where the workforce is hybrid and or remote? Yeah, great question. And oftentimes it comes up of, uh, do we do a whiteboard or take a photo of it? Or then do we have a digital board? And I think it's it's horses for courses. So you guys know your teams better than anybody. I don't think that there's a hard line you need to take. There is the power of the pin. And obviously there is an accountability that comes to light when you've got it on a board that's visible to everybody and you're manually putting up results and numbers that you're owning as an individual, as part of a team. But I also see in today's day and age, COVID obviously showed us that there needs to be a system that you can have digitally that uh, you can refer back to when you're not in the office for whatever reason, and also just keep a record. So where I would say was most powerful in today is having both. And if you can have a whiteboard that for people that are in the room that we're tracking results and capturing some of that commentary so that we don't lose it, but we also have a nice TV monitor or whatever up with the action item list, perhaps on whatever system you're using that it can live in perpetuity in whatever form you're referencing it from, then that's awesome. So hopefully uh, that's not too broad of an answer, but I guess the point is don't, don't feel like it has to be one or the other. And then um, I believe this is our last question. Do you mind sharing your slides from your presentation? Yeah, today? absolutely. Okay. No problem at all. I think we'll share a recording as well, if I'm not mistaken, but yes, definitely get correct. you to the slides. Oh, uh, let me see if we had any more sneak in here. Um, we did have one tools to create sustainability. Um, Good question. I think my my word that came to mind for sustainability is is consistency, and I think the consistency piece comes in with, are we being consistent as leaders? And mainly it's in the questions that we ask. And that's the easiest thing I think that we can have control over is how do we as leaders start asking questions in a way that is not only consistent, but it's purposeful, it's meaningful, and it comes from a humble intent. There's great references on that, but also in the terms of how do we go at it from a problem solving standpoint of what's happening now, what's our plan or what, what should be happening theoretically, what's our target, where are we having issues, I think if you can get into a habit with that, make it first sustainable for yourself where it no longer becomes a mystery of how to do it. It's just your lifeblood of what you're saying each day. And then I think over time, the team builds the systems around it that you're supporting, obviously, to also make it more sustainable. And I believe that is it. <laughs> Thank you, nice. Ben. Um, and just a quick reminder, you will receive a link from me to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. Also, real quick, quick um, we do have a skill point for TWI job instruction coming up September 17th through the 20th. Um, kind of touches on a little bit what Ben was talking about. And I believe that is all for now. Ben, again, thank you so much. We will see you all next time.